Aliens, baby, here we go again, whoa! You guys know I love me some space and I love me some aliens. Put those two together and what do you get? Exactly what we've been looking for, their existence. Now it is important to remember, technically speaking here, anything found on a planet other than the world could be considered alien. Given that the definition for alien is just that. As per Merriam-Webster's fourth definition for alien, referring to the kind we're speaking of, of course, I quote, coming from another world, which means if we found an organism or a plant, an insect, animal, or an intelligent species, they would all technically be considered alien. And that's still pretty rad if you ask me. Yeah, rad. So groovy, dude. I'm just saying aliens, you know, that aren't always like the things that probably first come to mind when we see them in media and comics and such. That's what we might explore, you know? Not like the big green things with the big eyes, but Maybe just like a little insect. I don't know. Today in LBQ, we're asking what if we found alien life on Mars? Aliens, baby, let's go! Make sure to smash that like button and let's get into it. Now, as you likely know, we've been studying Mars for quite some time. In fact, our first successful landing on Mars dates back to 1976. And over the years, as our technology has continued to improve, we've only learned more and more about the big red planet. Now you guys may want to sit down for this because what I'm about to tell you is likely going to make you rethink everything you thought you knew about evolution. You know that guy Darwin? He's an idiot. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> there are theories that life originally started on Mars and then it made its way to Earth, say through an asteroid. So in a sense, technically speaking here guys, we could originally all be from Mars. I mean, not humans per se, but what we've evolved from going way back could potentially have all started on Mars. And that in itself is wild. What I'm saying guys is technically we could be aliens. So that's pretty cool. Not sure how likely it is, but it's still very cool. Now I'm not going to just throw that at you and not back my claims, so let's look at the research done, which led some scientists to explore this wild idea. A team of researchers led by Benton Clark from the Space Science Institute proposed the idea that life may have originally started on Mars rather than on Earth. Their findings led them to conclude that the chances of this happening are just as likely or even more likely than life originating on Earth simply because Mars has all the requirements necessary for life in the first place. Again, we're not talking about a thriving human society like ours, but more so any form of plant or bacteria, you know, living things that aren't living the way we are, that we know of. I mean, maybe. Maybe plants have like social media. Imagine that. The scientists provided four main points as to why they believe what they proposed. For starters, given where Mars is located, it would have likely brought in more organic material from space rocks that ended up on the planet. Number two, sulfur, which is a very important element for any living thing, is more common on Mars than it is on Earth. As you can see, we're making a case for why Mars is clearly the superior planet. This next point, which I feel is very important, kind of seals the deal. Mars was actually much more habitable than Earth was for a longer period of time, due to the fact that Earth was hit by a massive asteroid of sorts, which led to the creation of the moon. This occurred approximately 20 to 100 million years after Earth had formed, and the scientific community has concluded this would have sterilized the Earth. And the fourth and final point, which I'll quote directly from Air and Space Magazine, I quote, Mars experienced many wet, dry, and freeze thaw cycles, which are critical for concentrating organic compounds. You toss all those things together and we got ourselves a potential life salad. Now, obviously this isn't a clear indication that this was necessarily the case. There is still a lot of research and work that needs to be done before we start jumping to conclusions and realizing all along, we've been fearing ourselves. Just looking in the mirror like, aliens are gonna come kill us, you're the alien. It's you, you've been the alien all along. It's also quite possible that we discover life forms which are brand new to us, or should I say, alien. However, just because something would appear to come from Mars doesn't necessarily mean it would have originated there. Are you guys ready for the biggest curveball of the century? What if it's mutated human bacteria that made its way to Mars during one of our missions? That is something that researchers and scientists are actively afraid of and desperately try to prevent. However, as we know, it's impossible to send a spacecraft to Mars without any bacteria from Earth joining for the ride. Despite best efforts, such as the process in which they build the crafts, cleaning each piece before attaching, and using rooms with air filters, it seems some microbes just won't budge. So now we go from life originated on Mars, then came to Earth, to life originated on Earth, we explored Mars for new life, accidentally left some bacteria there, and then somewhat artificially created life on Mars. Accidentally, but still accidentally and artificially. Now the issue with that is cross-contaminating planets. If this were to happen, unfortunately, it would make it incredibly difficult for us to understand what Mars was originally like prior to us bringing our Earth germs and bacteria to it. So they try to limit this as much as possible, but as previously mentioned, it's nearly impossible. Usually it's the opposite that occurs in Hollywood movies, where someone or something from space takes over the living organisms on Earth, AKA humans. But this is the real world and things just ain't that exciting. So we gotta make them exciting by yelling aliens 
aliens, baby, let's go! Going back to finding life on Mars, well, if we did find what appeared to be alien life on Mars, initially that would be very exciting. However, if we were to eventually find out it was just bacteria that had come from Earth and took over the natural bacteria of Mars, that would be a pretty big letdown. Now, a very exciting possibility is that we do find some form of ancient life on Mars, whether it be in the form of fossils or other signs that prove this theory. Of course, this doesn't necessarily mean we would find living aliens or an intelligent species. Yet any sort of sign that lends belief at one point, hundreds of millions or even billions of years ago, a species of any kind was able to thrive on Mars would be a very exciting sign. Not only would this potentially increase funding on the exploration of Mars, but it may lead us to learn even more about the evolution of Earth, humans, and space in general. As would be the case with any breakthrough discovery, especially on another planet, if we're able to say for certain that we found evidence of alien life on Mars, I think that would be a massive win for the scientific community. High fives all around guys, good job. As we can see, these things take a very, very long time, usually decades. So even if we found a sign, we likely wouldn't find any life-changing evidence immediately, but even a sign would be incredible. Now to wrap up, let's just go down the rabbit hole and say we find a thriving intelligent species living on Mars. We're talking a full society of aliens, whatever that may look like to you. Well, now the fun really begins. Given that, as we've seen in the past, humans and their country's leaders are very competitive in nature, it would be incredibly interesting to see how things would potentially play out here. Would the entire world come together and try to establish contact with this new intelligent life form found on Mars? Or, much like the race to the moon, would each country try to prove to the world that they are the leader in travel, technology, and space communication, and try to establish some sort of contact with this newfound species? If the latter happened, we all know America would win this time because we're the greatest country in the world! And I say that living in Canada, but just wanted to play in the whole patriotic 4th of July weekend, you know? Uh, beer and guns, America freedom! Anyways, guys, on that note, I want to wish you guys a very, very happy 4th of July weekend if you are celebrating. Hopefully soon we'll be celebrating Mars Day when we take over that planet and likely destroy it too. But until then, here's to America. As the days and weeks continue on, scientists are tirelessly working to understand the big red planet, such as why some instruments are finding methane gas, another potential sign of life, while others are not. It seems we've got a long way to go, so maybe it's best we don't find alien life on Mars anytime soon, because it may lead to some more problems and solutions in the future anyways. More questions than answers is what I'm getting at. Now I know this sounds like a crazy thought, but what if life didn't actually start on Earth? I mean, sure, Darwin made a pretty good point with his whole theory of evolution and all, but what if he was wrong? Just throwing that out there. <laughs> And instead, as some researchers and scientists have theorized, what if it's possible that the bacteria, which would eventually evolve into what we know as the human race, is actually from another planet? A planet that, at one point, appeared to be habitable for life. Maybe not the life we live, but life nonetheless. Today in LBQ, we're asking what if humans originated on Mars? Smash that like button and let's get into it, folks. You guys know I'm excited because we are talking about some science. I wasn't gonna yell, you know. I saw some comments, people wear earphones, they get mad when I yell, so it's fine. So this idea that humans came from Mars is obviously a bit of a wild one. If you know about the theory of evolution, then you would understand why the idea of humans originating on Mars doesn't make the most sense. If you believe in other things, then I respect your beliefs, and we'll leave it at that. Going back to Darwin's theory, which is the theory of evolution by natural selection, in simple terms, he believed that organisms evolved based on their physical attributes, as well as behaviors. So what does that exactly mean? Well, usually when people hear survival of the fittest, they assume it means strongest or most athletic, aka this guy. But as they say, it's not the strongest or smartest who will survive, but those who can adapt the best. In regards to Darwin's theory, his belief was that those who are born and able to adapt to their environment or a situation are more likely to thrive and produce more offsprings who then naturally behave in similar ways. Given that Darwin didn't know about genetics, he wasn't hypothesizing off of the idea that someone or something's physicality could literally be passed on to its offspring. It wasn't until this was later confirmed by geneticists which further cemented Darwin's theory, which some still argue, which is cool. However, Darwin wasn't always necessarily right on the money. For example, in one of his first editions of his book, On the Origins of Species, which was published in 1859, he used a hypothetical example to get his point across. That example included how bears could eventually turn into whales, given that bears would catch insects and fish swimming with their mouths open. I quote, I could see no difficulty in a race of bears being rendered by natural selection, more aquatic in their structure and habits, with larger and larger mouths, till a creature was produced as monstrous as a whale. At first, people thought the idea was laughable, so much so that Darwin would have the example removed from future publications. However, it seems he wasn't as far off as one may think. Although bears didn't turn into whales, over time, science, or should I say, and forewarning, I'm about to yell, SCIENCE BABY, LET'S GO, would reveal that hippos and whales both evolved 
from four-legged, even-toed hooved animals, which lived on land about 50 million years ago. These types of animals were referred to as ungulates, and our modern-day version of these things include cows, hippos, giraffes, deers, and pigs. Now that's not to say that the whales are related to those animals per se, as in they're not part of the same family, I guess. But going back in history, the same way humans and chimps evolved from the same fish, which evolved from the same bacteria, well these animals are all connected through evolution. I don't know why I was gonna say like evology or something, I was like, what the f*** does that mean? <laughs> Is evology a word? I feel like it might be. Now, of course, touching on this idea that humans originated from Mars wouldn't necessarily discredit the theory of evolution through survival of the fittest. If anything, it would likely just further prove the theory and cement it even more than it currently is. Looking at a chart of evolution, or a very basic chart, you can see that humans started out as bacteria, which then evolved into fish, reptiles, chimps, and eventually humans. Of course, I skipped a handful of steps, including the Neanderthals and all that fun stuff, which, is it Neanderthals or Neanderthals? I always thought it was thals, but apparently it's thals. That's irrelevant. But we're trying to keep things as basic and easy to understand as possible here. There is a fun little theory that the initial bacteria, which would eventually evolve into human life, didn't start on Earth. As you can imagine, this theory believes that the bacteria actually came from Mars and found its way to Earth, eventually planting its roots and growing into the human race, leading to the Earth we've likely destroyed by now. To some, this may seem like an absolute crazy idea, and to others, it's a very real possibility, which is why it's actually been given some credibility among those in the scientific community, myself included. I'm not a scientist, just a guy who yells about it, and you know what I'm about to yell. You guys know I'm about to yell about it right now. Here we go again. Science, baby, let's go! I'm gonna pop a blood vessel 100% one of these days. My eyes is gonna pop out of my face. So as I mentioned before, this idea that maybe bacteria which originated on Mars found its way to Earth and eventually evolved into humans. Well, this idea is actually a theory known as panspermia. Funny name, wild story. Although it's yet to be proven, and I said it has credibility among the scientific community, most appear to be in the camp that it's not possible. However, there are a handful of people who have explored this idea and believe that it is quite possible. The definition of panspermia <laughs> is as follows, I quote, the theory that life on the earth originated from microorganisms or chemical precursors of life present in outer space and able to initiate life on reaching a suitable environment. So it's not just a theory about how humans came from Mars, but more so this idea that bacteria is not only capable of withstanding life in space, but also has the ability to travel from planet to planet, eventually starting life. And although it seems crazy to some, the idea really started to gain credibility after some highlighted that it's believed Earth was only habitable about 4 billion years ago. Others argue there is evidence life on Earth started 3.8 billion years ago, while some are certain it was 3.5 billion. Regardless, it's a known fact that evolutionary change doesn't happen over a few decades, or even a couple hundred years. Real evolution takes hundreds of thousands, even millions or billions of years. It seems the magic number for most species to see a significant change in evolution, they need about a million years give or take. And the earlier we go, it seems the longer things take. Earth only supported single cell organisms for billions of years, and this has led to some researchers to respect the idea that maybe life didn't start out on Earth. Given how long evolution takes to truly see a change, and the earliest signs we have of life on Earth, some professionals think the time period in which the Earth would have been able to support DNA-based life wasn't long enough for us to evolve into what we've become today, or what evolved from bacteria to the next step. And this, of course, gives them reason to believe that the original bacteria which humans evolved from came from another planet or maybe even space and then came to Earth when it became a little more, I guess, livable. And as we know, when it comes to science, things tend to cost money, especially space exploration. Not as expensive as the ocean, which we've done videos on that, in case you guys were wondering, that's how I know that. But at the same time, humans are curious creatures. We want to learn, explore, and understand. So that's why a project was funded in hopes of proving or dismissing this idea that bacteria can travel through space. The Tan Popo mission, which translates to Dandelion Mission, is a scientific space mission put on by researchers from Tokyo University with the help of the Japanese space agency JAXA to try to prove the theory of panspermia. Is it JAXA? Like NASA? Maybe, I don't know. Taking bacteria from Earth, they tested different samples of the same bacteria with varying thickness. The samples were sent out to be tested for a year, two years, and three years. And what they discovered was quite amazing. The majority of the bacteria was able to survive, with it forming a layer of dead bacteria to protect the living organism below. And this, my friends, is game changing. Akihiko Yamagishi, a professor at Tokyo U who specializes in pharmacy and life sciences, and one of the main researchers on the project explained, I quote, the results suggest that Deinococcus could survive during the travel from Earth to Mars and vice versa, which is several months or years in the shortest orbit. Now, if this theory is proven, one could argue that life originated on Mars and came to Earth. But one could also technically argue that bacteria found on Mars 
could have been brought from Earth on a spacecraft, for example. As you guys see, this leads to a weird situation in which we're asking what came first, the chicken or the egg. Did the bacteria start on Mars and come to Earth, or start on Earth and come to Mars after we've contaminated it? It seems the theory of panspermia reaches far beyond just Earth and Mars. As Dr. Yamagishi explained, I quote, The origin of life on Earth is the biggest mystery of human beings and scientists can have totally different points of view on the matter. Some think that life is very rare and happened only once in the universe, while others think that life can happen on every suitable planet. If panspermia is possible, life must exist much more than we previously thought. So all in all, if life did originate on Mars, I think it would send the scientific community into an absolute frenzy. It wouldn't necessarily throw away all the work we've done, but more so just make us realize how complex the idea of evolution and life truly is. As Dr. Yamagishi explained, given that some think life in the universe only happened once, well, if it turns out that it could have happened numerous times and it could have started from many planets, potentially even other solar systems and galaxies, I mean, like, bro. Safe to say we definitely have our work cut out for us, and by we, I mean the professionals who do the hard work and then dumb it down for me to understand so I can relay that information to you guys in a fun and entertaining way. At least I hope it's fun and entertaining. It's fun for me. I don't know if it's entertaining for you guys or fun, but I entertain myself. Settling comfortably in the solar system over four billion years ago, the fourth planet from the sun, just half the size of our own home planet. She was discovered back in 1600 by Galileo, and to this day, the wonders of Mars continue to grow. And with Elon Musk highly confident that humans will be on Mars by 2026, one has to ask this simple question. What the f are we gonna do on Mars? Welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your host today, Taylor McWaters. And while sure it's cool to see Elon Musk smoking a blunt with Joe Rogan, talking about space and how he launched a Tesla off planet, we have to ask ourselves, where exactly is this going? Why are we f***ing with Mars now, of all planets? What, why? Only 140 million miles away, Mars is pretty similar to Earth only its days last 37 minutes longer, and they're a little colder than our days here. It's home to not one, but two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2 with some nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, and of course, oxygen. So if we compress the atmosphere, yeah, we could technically grow plants on Mars. We saw Matt Damon do this in The Martian, but it wasn't really a relaxing time now, was it? <laughs> Space is dangerous. This isn't news. And yet, SpaceX wants to take humans there. Okay, sounds fun, I think. They have the new Starship rocket and they want to go and start building a permanent settlement on Mars. Permanent. Permanent. Why, why do they use the word permanent? What's the deal there? Not just like a weekend getaway, permanent. Okay, sick. But you can't just order a space Tesla, blast some lo-fi hip-hop in the back seat, and voila, you've arrived at your destination. No, space is tricky. Space travel is all about timing. These missions to Mars happen during windows. Now these are referred to as launch windows. And Elon said we may be ready for this next launch window to send humans to Mars. So every 26 months, thanks to planetary alignment, we're given the perfect time to huck something at Mars. And then she swoops in, catches it, and she's like, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your space junk. I'm gonna go back over here for two years. And it's not gonna be cheap either. The first four people that get to step foot on the big red, it'll cost SpaceX roughly $6 billion. And once they get there in 2025, they would have to wait two years for another crew of four to arrive. That's not bad, four people for two years. Sure, it might get kind of boring, maybe you'll kill each other, but four isn't a bad number. You have a lot of game options with four. Code Names, that's a great game right there. Mario Party, like that kills two years right there. Just not Monopoly or else the whole crew will hate each other and then it'll turn into a horror film. You don't want that. Also, way too many pieces for a game in space. That's way too many, they'd be such a mess. Just open the box, you're like, damn it. Start grabbing them. Ah, damn it. Grab Someone grab the fives. That's a lonely couple years otherwise. It's like waiting for a cosmic bus to come and pick you up. That's great, but you can't leave. So that's also terrifying. So first thing I'm doing on Mars is I'm having a panic attack. Yeah, the second that shuttle leaves, I'm gonna feel sick. I'm, I'm gonna freak out. The planet itself is quite beautiful, and if exploring the sea of dust on foot doesn't cut it, Recently, NASA shared footage of its helicopter Ingenuity taking flight for the first time on Mars, and it's pretty sick. And while it's not as cinematic as that bowling alley drone video, it's still quite the breakthrough. Drones will be super helpful in the exploration of Mars. I mean, one of NASA's rover Spirit straight up got stuck in a sand trap back in 2009. He just got stuck. The thing was stuck forever until the batteries died and then we wished it a farewell on May 24th, 2011. That was the end. That was it. What a sad way to go out. 
Plus, this means by the time we can actually go and visit Mars, they'll probably have helicopter tours up and running. Elon Musk is also tight with Joe Rogan. Maybe they can do like a Fear Factor Mars episode with helicopter stunts. That would be something. And if you're a geologist and Earth is somehow boring you, it looks like Mars could use a few of you up there as well. Just at the beginning of this month, NASA's Mars rover discovered a small greenish rock. It discovered this rock in the Jezero crater where they're searching for life after recent discoveries show the crater once was home to a deep lake. So this rock may give us more answers to Mars' beautiful history. Dutch scientist Christian Huygens was responsible for discovering many parts of the solar system, like the rings of Saturn, for example. And in 1672, he observed a bright area on Mars that was supposedly the polar ice caps. And in July 2008, NASA confirmed they detected water vapor. So we have ice and water on Mars. This is a thing. I'll tell you what we're gonna do with ice on Mars. This is exactly what we're gonna do. We are going to create the ultimate sport. One point five million people bought that Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight, and you're telling me you wouldn't tune into robots curling on Mars? I'll pay ninety dollars to watch this thing. I don't care. Get Joe Rogan to narrate the thing. Oh, oh, he's oh, he's it. oh, he's going oh, out. He's out. He's, he's out. out. He's out. And with these leaked UFO videos turning out to be the real deal, maybe we shouldn't go to Mars. Like maybe they're trying to warn us. Hey, maybe stop being awful to each other and maybe not launch helicopters or civilizations on Mars. Just an idea, I don't know. I'm gonna drive ships that look like pyramids and warn you. I mean, we're going to witness the end of coral reefs in like the next 20 years. And we're talking about doing work on Mars. Hm, sweetie, check yourself. Before I wreck myself? Oh. Besides, we've only explored 5% of the ocean. We have lots to figure out down there as well first before we even get to Mars. But I'll save that for another what the f Wednesday. Guys, thanks so much for joining us on Life's Biggest Questions. I've been your host for today, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next week.